Yo, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm releasing another new product and it's this little device. So this is called the Halo RC Blackmagic Controller and as the name implies, it controls Blackmagic cameras. Um, so this is just a little touchscreen uh, device that can scan and connect to Blackmagic Pocket 4K and the Blackmagic Pocket 6K and it will stream all the camera settings into this device and give you full access and control to them. Displays time code, how much battery is left on the camera, how much record time is left on your card and along with all your standard settings. So it's you can power it over USB-C or you can also charge the integrated battery over USB-C so it can run independently. Uh, you power, power it on and off using this button on the top there. It can be used completely wirelessly as you can see in my hand here. Battery lasts for about uh, an hour um, and it stays on standby for about two days makes it really versatile depending on what you're using it for. For me personally, I've been using it for uh, changing the settings on my naked Blackmagic cameras. So I've just been using it wirelessly like so. I just pull it out of my bag, plug my monitor in, adjust the settings to set the focus, uh, to set the exposure, and then away I go. This turns off automatically. Uh, so as I said, yeah, I just use it handheld like so, but um, a lot of people might want to uh, tap this into a rig. So if you're blocking the screen with, say, a V-mount battery, um, this will give you all the access to the settings so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I've added quarter 20 mounting holes to the back, so you've got four quarter 20 mounting holes on the back and a further two on the bottom there. That'll allow you to attach rails or cheese plates to this and then uh, attach onto whatever camera rig you've come up with. Um, hopefully you're going to be seeing this on terrible black magic rigs on Facebook soon, um, but we'll see. I've managed to add as many settings as I possibly could into this. Um, so I've studied the black magic um, API that they provide so that people can make devices like this and I've managed to output all the available commands and basically I've been able to do everything that it can do um, and fit it all into this little uh, standalone device. So I just kind of felt like I got really sick of having to use my phone all the time to uh, control the cameras. It can be really awkward especially if you're with somebody else that you want them to control the camera for instance you've got to then give them your phone uh, unlocked and yeah depending on who you are and what you've got on your phone you may not like the idea of doing that so I thought um, a nice standalone device that basically does the same sort of thing as a phone app would but all written and coded by me so that I can make changes and updates as uh, new features come to the camera like I know in the latest Blackmagic update they've added the ability to delete and stuff so I'm hoping they update the, the Bluetooth API as well and when they do so I'll be able to update my device as well so I'm not relying on either port keys with the monitor or an app developer who no, lever, no longer provides updates. So yeah, let's head over to the bench now and go through the menu system and let me show you what it can do. So as you can see here, it's scanning for devices and I haven't got my Bluetooth turned on. So I'm just going to turn the Bluetooth on and the camera is found. You can see there it tells you what camera it is. So it's a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. It's got the same Bluetooth name and that's just its Bluetooth address. So when you tap the screen it goes to connect and you have to enter the pass key which is 850763 And you can see Halo RC BMC is connected to the camera. 
So you can see I've created this uh, UI in the similar in the same style as the Blackmagic UI. So along the top you've got FPS, shutter speed or angle, iris settings, ISO, and white balance and tint, just like that. Um, 6.2 volts there is telling me that the camera is about to die. <laughs> and when you disconnect, this happens. And it immediately just goes back to scanning again. Now you can see I've put a new battery in and it scans and finds the camera again. It's already paired, so it should just uh, connect and load up all the settings. So, as I was saying, very similar to how uh, the uh, UI is used on the Blackmagic camera itself. Uh, you can see now that the battery power of the camera is displayed here as 7.5 volts. This 6 minutes and 27 seconds is the amount of record time on your chosen media. I've got a CFast card in there that's actually pretty uh, full. <laughs> Uh, we've got a record button here, and uh, this is called the instantaneous button uh, on the left here, the blue button, and you've got playback in the middle there. And obviously time code, um, resolution, codec, lens settings, and optional settings. So it's just going to go through the menus with you now. And I might as well start with explaining this instantaneous blue button here by showing you the menu here. So if you go into the extra settings, you can change the screen brightness, so you can turn it up and down, um, but you can choose what the blue button does. So it's all instantaneous uh, actions, so you can have it set to instant focus, so when you push the blue button, it will do the same as holding down on the screen. Uh, you can take a photo, which is like clicking the photo button on the camera. Um, or you can set the aperture, not setting it to auto, but um, setting it to whatever it, it's instantaneously auto. So it doesn't remain automatic, it just sets it to what it thinks it, you should be using at that time. Um, so we're going to leave it on focus for now and then when you click the focus button um, it focuses in the middle of the screen um, the, the focus thing I've done is a little separate video that includes the lens control Let me just show you the, the photo mode. So when you click blue, it'll take a photo. You see it might, might not have been in frame, but it was. A little photo icon pops up there, so you know you're taking photos. When you hit record, you get this nice red outline, and uh, the button lights up, and obviously the time code starts running. Um, then if you want to go into playback and play back that file, you just click play. Now we've got different playback controls, so you can skip through uh, the tracks and you can play it back. <laughs> uh, you just hit that play button again and it goes back to your normal mode. Um, B-roll settings, so you can change Again, this is a firmware issue. This is on, I've got about six cameras at the moment, all on different firmware, so I'm gonna write a bit of a wiki to show you which firmwares work best. Some of them have um, full control over changing between ProRes and B-RAW. Some of them don't. Um, what you might find is 
just by changing to a windowed resolution, so not the full res, that you can then change the ProRes. Maybe not. No, so this firmware in particular, you can't change between B raw and ProRes on any any uh, resolution. But if you were on ProRes, the ones that you can't, the resolutions you can't shoot in ProRes would be grayed out and you can't select them. But you can see here, you can jump between the different resolutions and they pop up at the bottom there. Um, obviously you got FPS that cycles through the available uh, frame rates that you can use and if you want to use um, off speed you just click that and you can see it turns green and also leaves a green line under there then you can change the off speed rate to whatever you want so maybe you want to do off speed 50 uh, or maybe you want to just do 48 so it's double um, you can switch I don't think you can switch between speed and angle annoyingly that's another firmware issue um, you can do it on the camera who's really going to be switching anyway you just set to what you want um, so you've got some presets at the bottom or you can just set it to auto which will do it for exposure purposes and of course you can just go through all the available shutter angles Okay, so next up we've got iris control, so you can get the lens to go through all the different apertures, or you can turn on auto. Um, ISO, obviously cycle through the different ISOs, and you've got your presets at the bottom there. White balance, same again cycle through and choose whatever white balance you want or you can just choose a preset couldn't fit tint on there so you've actually got a separate page for tint with the same presets on the bottom you can also set auto white balance from there as well and it'll instantaneously set the white balance to what it thinks it should be um what else does it do that's about it really i guess Right, so hopefully I've been able to explain all the feature set and show you how, uh, how to use it and how it looks. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. Uh, this, is of, this is the first thing like this I've ever designed and it's the first bit of coding I've ever done as well. So I did have to le learn how to write C++, uh, which I've got some web development coding experience, so it wasn't too bad. But yeah, many, many hours of watching videos and starting on basics and working up to this. Um, but yeah, pleased with how it came out and uh, hope you are too. Available today at halorc.com and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Laters.